Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on how to implement infinite scrolling in your React applications. So infinite scrolling is a common pattern in web development that allows users to scroll through large data sets without having to paginate through multiple pages. In this tutorial, we will be using the intersection observer API to detect when the user scrolls down to the bottom of the page and then we will load the next batch of items from our dataset and this is the example how the final page is going to look like when we will scroll down to the very bottom then more items are going to be loaded from the dataset that we will fetch from an api which is going to be this one dummy json so we are using dummy json because it supports pagination and if you want to implement infinite scrolling then you must have support for pagination in your apis we will also be using intersection observer api so for those who don't know what it is it is a browser api to find out when a document element comes into the viewport of another parent element or maybe in the browser window so without wasting any more time let's get started with our code the first thing that I will do is I will create a new folder in this SRC folder with the name of components to create our new product list component. Let's create a new folder inside it with the name of product list. And inside product list, I'm going to create a new file with the name of index.jsx. Now I'm going to use the ES2016 toolset to generate a boilerplate code for the React arrow function component where the export default statement is already there for this code example we will also be using the react bootstrap library so react bootstrap is a front-end framework or library to build layouts for user interfaces and it has support for many other kinds of components like buttons forms lists progress bars etc so we will be using this library to create the card like layout that you are seeing right now over here so this card is basically a component of this react bootstrap library and we will be using it so to install react bootstrap i am just going to install it in the terminal using the command npm install bootstrap and then react bootstrap we also need to import the css style of bootstrap library so we can do that in our app.js file so all we need to do is to just import the bootstraps minified css file in app and then it will be available for the rest of our components which are now let's get back to our product list component it's time to import the necessary dependencies so first i'm going to fetch user state and we are also going to need the use effect and then we will also need use ref to create refs for our div and then we can import the react bootstraps card and row and call components as well to create our layout so these will be from react bootstrap the first thing that i will do in our product list component is i will create the products property the products state property so products and then set products equals to use state this is going to be initialized with an empty array and next we are going to initialize another property which will just determine if we have any more products to fetch from the api so we are going to name it has more this is going to be initialized as true if there are no more products to fetch from the api then we will set its value to false we will also need the page number so page and then set page we will set its initial value as zero next we need to create a constant which will be called as element ref and the initial value of this ref is going to be null so we will be using this ref for the div element that we will use to check for the user reaching end of the page 
so whenever the user will reach the end of the page then the div element which is at the very bottom it will become visible and then we will know when to load more products from the api now the first thing after this that we will do is we will create an effect function and it will be kicked in whenever the products array is changed or whenever new products are added to this products array so what we will do is we will create an observer a new observer whenever the products changes so new intersection observer inside it we have to provide a callback whenever the div at the end of the page comes into the viewport of the window so what we will do is we will create a separate function for this callback and let's call this function as on intersection so for now i'm just going to paste its name over here and we will provide its implementation in a moment so if observer is not null and if element ref dot current is available then we can simply observe the element ref dot current by calling observer dot observe so element ref dot current element ref dot current is going to point towards the div which is at the end of the page and then finally we have to do the cleanup as well so for cleanup we just have to return a function which is just going to disconnect the observer from observing anything so if observer is not null then we can simply call observer dot disconnect and that's pretty much everything for our use effect function now let's provide the implementation for on interaction on interaction callback will be called when the div at the end of the page comes into the viewport of the window which will simply mean that the user has scrolled at the end of the page which will simply mean that the user has scrolled up to the end of the page and it's time to load new products so first we will get the first entry but before that we also have to provide the arguments for entries so for any number of items or elements that the intersection observer is observing all of their intersection state is going to be available in this entries argument array so because we are observing only one element we just have to fetch the state for the first one by calling entries zero so if first entry dot is intersecting and if there are any more products to fetch then we are just going to call a function which will be called as fetch more items so this fetch more items will just be responsible to fetch more items or more products and for this fetch more items we can create another function so function actually this is going to be an async function because we will be using the fetch api to fetch more products so what this fetch more item will do is it will fetch the next batch of products and how it will do that it will use the fetch api to do that so const response equals to await fetch now i am going to use the dummy json's fake api for products so i'm just going to copy this url and i am going to paste it over here but we need to convert it into a template string from a normal string so because this api supports pagination we can provide the limit of items that we want to fetch so at a time we want to fetch 10 products and we want to skip the products which have been already fetched and this can be found out by simply using the current page number so page multiplied by 10 so for example if we have to fetch the fifth page then we have to skip all the items up to page 1 to 4 so that means 4 into 10 that means 40 so we have to skip 40 items but we have to fetch the next 10 items so that is how this pagination is going to work so next we are going to fetch the product data so we have to call await response.json now if data dot 
products dot length if it's equals to zero then we just have to set the has more state property value to false because if no more products are being fetched from the api then we don't have to fetch any more products so we can just set it to false otherwise what we can do is we can set the products array with the new products so we can schedule a callback so previous products are there but we have to set a new array so we can use the spread operator so we can spread out the existing products and then we can spread out the new products so this promotes immutability which is a very important aspect of functional programming paradigm and now when we have done that then we can simply increment the page number as well so previous page and previous page plus one this is going to increment the page number now our fetch more items function code is finished and it's time to create the layout so in the return first we are going to create a react fragment so first let's check if there are any more products left on the server for the api to fetch if there are then we can simply render a div element and the div element will simply say load more items and we can also set the ref for this div so ref equals to element ref and we can also apply some styling to it so style equals to we just have to you know make it centered so text align is going to be center for this div let's just format this code once all right now it's time to create the card layout and for that we just have to map the existing products so let's do that products dot map so every product item is going to be converted into a card so let's just return a card now let's first set the card key because this is going to be a list of cards so this can be item dot id then we can set some style for it i'm going to set the card width as let's set it to 600 px for this example let's set the margin to zero auto to make it centered let's also set the class name to margin bottom with the value of two all right now let's create a row by using the row component of react bootstrap and then we have to create two columns inside it by using the call component so the first column is going to contain the product image and for medium devices i am going to set the call span to four and let's set the call span for this second column to eight let's add the img element and i'm going to set the src as item dot thumbnail you can check out which properties are available by simply observing the response which has been returned or you know just going to this dummy json's website let's also set the alt text so alt text can be product image in case the image is not available let's also set some styling for it ideally you should be using you know style sheets but i mean for this code example you can see what we are doing right so width can be set to i think 100 percent let's also set the margin to maybe 10 bx that should be enough now in the second column we are going to add card body so card dot body let's set card description by using the card text so item dot description and i'm just going to copy this card text to render the item price let's also place a dollar before that because probably the price is in dollars 
all right i think that's pretty much everything that we need to do for our product list to make it an infinite scrolling product list all right so now it's time to use this product list component in our app.js so what i will do is i'm going to delete this div from over here and then the first thing that i will do is i will import the product list but it's not here let's see so what i think the problem is i may need to rename this index to product list and let's also export default product list now let's get back to app.js and then import product list and then we can simply use this component in app.js now let's see if our code is working in the web browser so i'm going to call npm and then start so it is asking if i want to run this app okay because you can already see that we have this demo app already working or running on port 3000 i'm just going to say yes to it because yeah we have to run this application now let's see if our code runs it says load more items but nothing is happening all right so it says that if you can see it 400 bad request what is wrong with this url all right so i think i forgot to add the ampersand in our url in the product list so let's do that and i have to do it over here yep this is a bad form url now let's see if this works okay so now it's working you can see that when the load more items div is in the browser's viewport then the next batch of products is loading let's scroll down there seems to be another issue over here looks like the same set of products are being loaded over and over again so let's see what's wrong over here so in our use effect we are just returning the function to all right so i think yeah this is the problem over here this should be a dependency array not the dependency directly now let's save the code okay now let's just refresh the page again and let's try to scroll down all right so now new products are being loaded is there any issue in the console nope everything looks fine so this is how the infinite scrolling code can be implemented in react using intersection observer and an api which supports pagination so i hope that this tutorial has helped you understand how to use this api to implement infinite scrolling in react if you have any questions or feedback please leave a comment below and thanks for watching